no mic? Caught it. Let's just let it go like that. Start it without the volume. All right? Good. Yes, technical difficulties. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, a.k.a. the world's, no, the galaxy's most passionate Universe. universe. That was the infinity sign. I have no idea why I did it. Um, Merlot. I'm not drinking any beep. Merlot is a line in Hollywood music fame that absolutely impacted the industry. And I'm sad about that. Merlot's a nice grape. It never wanted to hurt anybody. Got caught up in the crossfire. And today we are going to be looking at American Merlot. We're gonna keep away from Pomerol and some of the great wines, uh, Macetto and some of the great Merlots around the world. I'm gonna focus on the US, which means that Ian clearly put some uh, Washington State Merlots in here, as I know, and I also told him to really mix it up. There's some lower price point stuff here, so not everything falls in the same price range, which has been something that we've done. Ma, can you give me, can you give me a pen and turn off the music? Um, I'm getting serious, you're right. And uh, I'm excited today. I think, uh, I think that this should be a lot of fun. I always like the blind tastings. You guys tend to as well. If you do, please leave a comment. Lurkers, I'm looking at the stats. It's just not fair. The only reason that it's making me feel better is that iTunes continues to pick up more of our market share. So I'm assuming you're watching it on the Apple TV or on your iPod and that's why you can't do it. But please come back when you get in the office. Leave a comment. It makes me feel so nice. Sheesh. Six Merlots, blind. Let's get into it. Wine number one, Mott. <laughs> Still my favorite little nuance of the Thunder Show. Zooming in on brown paper bags. All right, so, big ass glasses here so you know we're serious. I mean, really, at the end of the day, what that movie did to Merlot was made people think it wasn't cool, Pinot Noir exploded, all that jazz, and it's just shocking. Only in America can that really happen, I think. Um, but it, it's a varietal that deserves more attention. And I also think we're sitting in a pocket. Did you see where I was going? I stopped it, did a good job. We're sitting in a pocket right now where you can get good, good Merlot for the right price because the demand is a little softer. So keep that in mind as a savvy shopper. Great color, just gorgeous. Pour a little bit out for all the uh, maniacs that are, oh, did I get you, Mott? I'm sorry, for all the maniacs that aren't with us anymore. A little sniffy sniff in the big ass glass. Get some red raspberry coming through. Just classic red fruit, you know, fruit punchy. Good nose. A um, little bit of a, a, a dark, darkness kind of falling. It's kind of like bright fruit, then darkness. So it's almost like red and black fruit on the nose. A little bit of oak coming through. A little American oak kind of smell. Let's give it a whirl. Definitely a wine that brings a little more oak, vanilla, creaminess to the table than my palate likes. So this is definitely ah, the oak monster and that makes me sad. Uh, the oak monster scares me as you guys know. Uh, I think when wines get over oak they really lose the true essence of the vineyard which makes me sad. It's also replicatable so a lot of people can grab junky grapes and over oak. Um, and this one's over oaked, just by a good amount, actually, as well. Um, I don't like it. Um, I, I find it to be a little hot on the palate as well. As you can see, I didn't even want, I didn't even go for a second kind of observation. I think it's a just boring, bland. If it's more than 10 bucks, it's a real problem. And, uh, and that's why number one. I mean, didn't really give it too much of a time. Why number two? Weird. Wine number two. Let's do that. There we go. All right. Sure. That first wine mop was no fun. That's just what's everything that's wrong with wine. Okay, wine number two. A little bit lighter on the color, so right off the bat, that is something to take note of. Sniffy sniff. Totally. I mean, totally different animal. Little smokiness, little beef jerky. Almost vinegar-like. 
balsamic vinegar like on the nose. Wow. Uh, chemical aspects coming through on the nose. But very smoky, smell this month. Very smoky and gamey on the nose. Really seems like, I feel like we went buffalo hunting, shot a couple of buffaloes and put them on the fryer. I mean, just weird. You know? It smells like my dog when, he come, when she comes in, getting wet a little bit. Is that right? Little wet dog. I think you're right, Mont. That's a good, that's a very good call. A term a lot of wine people use. Not having dogs, you know, has hurt me in picking up that scent. Let's give it a whirl. Now, I'm confused because I don't know if this is even from California or Washington State. I mean, this is really very thin, um, completely unbalanced, awkward at best. Uh, I don't like it again. Um, maybe I would pay six bucks for this, probably eight for the other one, just because it's more, I mean, though, here's what's funny. Did you notice how I said I'll pay six for this or eight for that? What's funny is I rated this a little bit higher. That's how much I hate oak, but I do recognize that what I disliked about wine number one is not something everybody out there is going to dislike. Whereas wine number two, I don't see a lot of people really liking this wine. It's a very thin effort. It, as a matter of fact, I would struggle. I, why even, you know, let's call a spade a spade. I probably wouldn't even guess this to be, I probably think about where is this from? Like Romania, uh, you know, is this, is this a, is this an Italian varietal done in the U.S.? I could see this being a Sangiovese in like Temecula. No diss on Temecula. You know, so just very weird, very thin, very poorly made, not happy. Wine number three. This is awful right now, Ma. I mean, these are, I would say that without a doubt, those are two of the worst wines back to back we've ever had on the show. I mean, let's really call it. Just no fun. Wine number three, come on. Three is a very good number. It's my mom's birthday. Okay, number I play it on roulette all the time. I like three a lot. Three come through for me. Sniffy sniff. Great color. Wine number three is corked. Wow. Ma, can you give me another big ass glass? Wine number three is corked. You would taste like a, you would smell like a wet cardboard component. This wine is corked. Uh, wine number three has been disqualified. Woodward Canyon, Merlot, 2006 from Columbia Valley, 94 points, wine enthusiast, $33. Disqualified for corkage. That sucks. And a first in a long time, Mott. No, don't do that, right? Uh, Mott got all up in arms. Corked, Mott. C-O-R-K-D, right? Dot com, what? Um, so that wine is corked, very weird. Ma, this is weird. This is, guys, I'm so sorry. This is a weird show. Two absolutely abysmal efforts. A corked wine. Wine number four. Oh man, this is really interesting. This is starting. I go on this whole pedestal about Merlot. Don't worry about Merlot. And we're having like the worst awkward show. Okay, this has amazing color. This is extremely dark for Merlot. Thank God we have two big ass glasses now, Ma. Crazy. Great color. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. Nice nose, very creamy on the nose, little black currant. Also a really nice kind of, um, it's kind of like raspberry rhubarb It's kind of like um, the old bottle caps candy, the, the strawberry cherry. Smelly, very nice nose, good sniffy sniff. All right, let's give it a whirl. Finally, something, something of serviceable qualities. The first thing that I get on this wine is an enormous sour cherry attack. I mean, if you've ever had really sour cherries right off the tree, this is really sour cherry. This is one of the most distinct flavor profiles in a wine that I've come across in a long time. This is sour cherries. Um, rounded out by some oak, but not over the top. Good firm tannins. This wine's really serious on the back end. Like J-Lo. I mean, really.
good, good solid structure. I like the subtle bark um, and a little bit like a rosemary black pepper component even on the back end of the finish. Great long finish, great structure. As a matter of fact, you know, yearning for like a steak or a rack of lamb. I mean, this is a wine that I would pair up with big boys. This is a Cabernet Lover's Merlot. This is a big wine with great structure, nice little subtle vanilla action that you're picking up from the oak. Very good wine, big turnaround. Um, probably a $35 wine is what I'm guessing on the paper. Um, really good comeback after, is this the sh- didn't we just have mic problems to start too? We should have known. Weird show. Wine number five, get over here, Mott. My favorite number in the world, my lucky number. I love five. I love five a lot, actually. Um, let's rinse. Let's see what's going on here. Wine number five. Okay, right off the bat, lighter color, something to take note of. Let's give a sniffy sniff. Little barkiness coming through. I don't mean like a dog, I mean just a little uh, a bark like from a tree. Um, really nice blueberries, very subtle, small blueberry action on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. It tastes cheap. Um, that's the first thing that comes to mind. I'm gonna go $12. I don't like it very much. Um, it's thin, it's boring. It's uh, it's almost like, you know when somebody brings along a friend, like you were gonna go with your friend Todd to the Mets game, um, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna bring my buddy from college, he's going back a little bit, I'll bring my buddy from college, he's visiting, oh, cool, Craig, and you meet Craig, and like, you're just an awesome outgoing guy, and you're like, hey, Craig, what's up, you can have a great time, and Craig's like, nice, baseball. Like, you know, like, not a bad person, this is not, I'm not mad at this wine, but boy, oh boy, it would have been nice if this said something in the nine innings. And that's kind of what I feel about this wine. Just very quiet, boring, not interesting, not bad, a little bad. You know, just lacks any kind of intrigue. Another pretty bad Merlot. And you know, and I've gotta say, for all my oomph to like, hey, let's drink Merlot, da da da, it's not exciting to be three out of five wines being pretty 72, 68, 67 if you want a preview. It's not exciting to see three wines like this show so poorly. Now, ma, these are three out of the thousands of Merlots made, but we would be remiss to not acknowledge the fact that this is a pretty difficult show. Wine number six, I mean, not fun. Do you like that analogy with Craig? Thought that made sense. Mm -hmm. Kind of really told what that wine was all about to me. Little rinse. Or I need it after this show. All right, little sniffy sniff. It's like a half bottle. Now this has a little vegetal component on the nose, so there's a greenness coming through that I like a little bit. But again, this is, gets to my Cabernet Franc heart. So I think a lot of you out there may not like this as much. But there's definitely a greenness, a little bit of like a English pea meets broccoli top but also some good fruit. I also get like dried cranberries on the nose. A little bit of oak and fruit. Let's give it a whirl. Not bad, kind of light as well. Not awful. Good fruit, definitely the second best wine of the bunch, but that's like being the cutest girl in a six person town. I mean, really, Serviceable, <laughs> but that was wrong. Where'd you get that? I'm, I'm just mod. I make it all up. What do you want from me? Um, just not great. Just not great. You know, just like a great old fashioned, you know, 85 point wine. Oh, I'm still <laughs> um, you know, and you know, probably 15 bucks. I mean, disaster city. I apologize. This is just a very awkward show. You get them once every 750 shows. Let's line them up. DQ'd, not its fault. Woodward Canyon, great wine usually for Washington State, not its fault, Cork's fault. <clears throat> a 
And there you have it. In uh, fifth place, I guess, last, my number one, with a score of 67 points, I'm hoping it's $10, is Summers, Knights Valley Merlot Reserve, 2006, 21 US dollars, 91, 90 points Robert Parker. Parker and I have not been uh, seeing eye to eye lately in the blind tastings. I don't see it at all, no way. But, again, big, you know, uh, uh, yeah, big and, and oaky, just too oaky for me, again. Similar rationale to why I didn't like the, uh, the Mount Eden that he loved so much. There's something about just too, too far. You know, I like being more in the middle. Maybe it's my immigrant root spot, but I don't like to be too over the top. That's, that's what happens, that's when the economy collapses, when people go too far, just saying. Say in the last place, this wine is, this wine should definitely be less expensive than this wine. A clear, you know, even if you noticed before I mentioned this was probably a better quality wine. If this wine is more than $12, I'm gonna vomit in the brown paper bag. Like I was on an airplane that was very bumpy. 68 points. $10, okay good. Uh, this is the Flying Fish from Washington State. 85 points wine spectator. I, you know what? I made the comments that I made. I could taste that it was inexpensive, and it was. Again, another one I think that's fairly inexpensive. Uh, 72 points, wine number five. Though I was intrigued by some of the greenness, I will say. Robert Carl from Washington State. Horse Heaven Hills Merlot, 90 points wine enthusiast, 20 bucks. You know? Uh, 85 points, line number six, 85 points, you know, oh is this the greenness, the six wine, yeah this was probably the green right, what? Sebastiani Merlot from Sonoma, 86 points from Connoisseur's Guide, 13 bucks, very much more in my line, yep, more in my line. And then the only Merlot that I can tell you that you should go out and get, except that I think it's a $35 wine, and that 35 bucks, 90 points, it's not like screaming. Let's see. The only savior in the room, your friend from Duckhorn. Duckhorn 2006 Napa Valley Merlot. It is 96 points wine news. It is $44, I scored it 90 points. I liked it. It definitely, Mott, have the image here. Please scan here, show the image. Uh, it was definitely the best Merlot blind, um, but it's 44 bucks. I really don't even know what to say. Pretty difficult results for Merlot today. I feel bad for it because I know that a lot of you are watching right now and be like, see? That's why I don't drink it, Gary. Uh, I'm speechless. I just, uh, I don't like how this show went. The wine's really, really underperforming. But you know what? I've got to call them for my palate, like I see them, and I want to really do that honesty for you. And so, I got to tell you, we're gonna have to do more Merlot blind tastings because right now, my world. My Merlot world has been turned upside down. I'm very, very disappointed. Robert Carl, one of the producers I absolutely adore in Washington State, disappointed. Summers makes one of the more interesting wines in all of California. The Charbonneau that they make is spectacular. Their Chardonnay, spectacular. Too oaked for me. Again, I would say, even though it was at the bottom of my run, a wine that maybe falls into more of your guys' palates, just as the sensitivity oak. Not bad on the Sebastiani side. Did not like this at all, and a corked wine. Maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought, but definitely quite disappointing. Question of the day, best and worst Merlot you've ever had? Should I mention to them our little thing that if there's not enough comments, I'm out? Nah, let's not mention it. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world. Thank you for watching.